Hey guys, this is Greg from gregshole.com back with another video. I know it's been a minute. This week I'm talking about OpenVPN and MicroTik. So basically connecting remote offices with your hub or your data center environment. It's really great for uh, dynamic allocation of IPs. So if your remote site has DHCP enabled, this will uh, allow your MicroTik to pull an IP address and then still create a secure tunnel back to the main office and then securely communicate those internal subnets, at least in this configuration example, those internal subnets. Uh, we're going to use a dynamic routing protocol, in this case OSPF, Open Shortest Path First, to communicate the internal routes in between the two locations. So what is OpenVPN? First it uses TCP port 1194, so no special protocols like uh, GRE. So um, PPTP uses GRE, L2TP uses IPsec encryption. This uses neither of those. So it does work through network address translation as well. So if this guy's behind a masqueraded IP, port overload, um, port address translation, NAT overload, whatever the nomenclature is, it's all the same thing. Um, that device is still going to work. If this router lives out in AWS or Azure, kind of the hub router, it's still going to function just fine. Uh, those of you familiar with AWS, the firewall in front of that will only allow uh, TCP or UDP ports through. So OpenVPN works great and it's extremely scalable. You can put a lot of clients on this. So here's our diagram or rather my diagram. It can be yours too if you like. So very simple setup. On the left is our hub location. He's got a public IP of openvpn.gregsoul.com. That's what's going to be configured on all of the clients. His hub subnet, 10.0.0.0/24. And then OpenVPN, as clients connect, they're going to be on the 10.255.255.0 subnet. And we're going to add that via area 255 on OSPF. The client, you can see he uses a client subnet of 172.16.0.0/24. So hub location, this is going to be your main office. Maybe it's a data center router. A remote office is only going to tunnel the user subnets. So user subnets from the hub back to the remote office. So the uh, 10 0 slash 24 and 172 16 subnets are going to be allowed through. Um, you could technically tunnel all the user traffic. Uh, in this case, it's not. It's just going to be... Uh, the private subnet, the private subnet. I'm going to start on the hub router here. I'm going to go ahead and create the VPN pool. That way, as users pop in, they automatically pull an IP address via a pool. I like to name things pool, dash, and then what they are. So we'll say OVPN. Pretty simple there. The pool is going to be 2.255.255.2 to 10.255.255.254. I'm leaving uh, .1 as the address that the um, hub router is going to use himself. Next, I'm going to create a self-signed certificate. And this is all straight off the wiki. So it's copy and paste. The only thing I actually modified was the IP address that my hub router is using. So you just paste it in. Give it a second to crunch, paste in the next bit, and this is probably going to take just a little bit longer to compute. So why even bother the self-signed certificate? OpenVPN won't allow you to enable an OpenVPN server unless you have a self-signed certificate in there. And again, you could use certificate-based authentication on these. Um, in this example, I'm trying to do it as simple with as few steps as possible. So no certificate based authentication on this one. Now that the certificate is done being created, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next step, which is going to be open PPP profiles tab, and then I'm going to create a new profile. So local address is going to be 10.255.255.1 and local address is the address the router that this is directly configured on. So this hub router, this will be the IP address he utilizes. For remote, I'm just going to have it be the OpenVPN pool. 
and that is it for that. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a secret. Again, if you were using Radius authentication, you wouldn't need to create these secrets, but this is just going to be local accounts on the router, and I'll name it test1 and test1, and we'll go ahead and tell it to use profile1. All right, moving right along, I'm going to enable OpenVPN. So back under interfaces, there's the OpenVPN server. Enable, so mode you have Ethernet or IP. Ethernet is going to be to do layer 2. Uh, IP is going to be layer um, 3. So I'm going to leave it as IP. Most of this I can keep default, default profile. I'll change to 1. You can see here's the self-signed certificate it produced. And OK. So just that simple and easy. As long as you've got the certificate out of the way first. I plan to enable OSPF in a minute, but... Prior to that, I'm going to go ahead and configure one of the clients just so you can sort of get an idea of what happens there. So I'll enter client one here, and the setup is even simpler. I go to PPP, drop down, and I'm looking for OpenVPN client. I'm going to name this OpenVPN. I'll call it Hub. Click the dial out tab. And the address is uh, ovpn.gregsoul.com. Good thing about it is you can use a DNS entry just in case that changes on my side or I want to swing you to a different gateway, something like that. I've got the option. Username is test1. Password is test1. Hit enter. Give it a second to crunch. You'll see it moves to R for running. Let me go ahead and do some verification. So I'll go IP address. It should have dynamically pulled an address, and it did indeed. It pulled .254. I'm going to go to IP routes now. And here via OpenVPN hub interface is reachable the 10.255.255 subnet, right? So I don't see the 10 0 slash 24 subnet coming from a hub. I'm not seeing anything really in here. So at this point, I could add a static route to um, 10.255.255.1, which is the hub router's address, which would send traffic over, or I could use a dynamic protocol. So I'm going to go ahead and start my testing. Ping. I'm going to ping 10.0.0.1. I'm going to source it from the internal IP address. I have on here so the user subnet 172.16.0.1 and it should fail because there's no routes to reach there right now but on this side I'm gonna go ahead and enable OSPF and that's done with first I'm gonna add a new area area 255 area ID I'll make it 255 or 0.0.0.255. I'm going to add the network command. So I'm going to make 10.255.255.0 slash 24 part of area 255. Then I'm also going to add the internal user subnet 172.16.0.0 slash 24 as part of area 255. So obviously OSPF is not configured on the other side yet, but it is attempting. So I'm going to come back over here to the main router, the hub router. I'll go router, OSPF. I'll create the area as well. Area 255, and I'll make the area ID dot 255 networks let me add 10.255.255.0 slash 24 and again this is the subnet that is used only for VPN connections all right so looking at my neighbors here I don't have anything in the list why could that be if I pop over the log I see a message saying discarding hello packet mismatch in network 
That's because by default, if I go IP address on the hub router, it's going to get a net mask of slash 32. Wherein the clients over here, OpenVPN handed them an IP address of slash 24. So I need to augment the hub router. If I go back to PPP, say open VPN server and I change net mask to 32 it'll drop the peer it should reestablish then routing OSPF the neighborship will come up moving all the way to the left on the tabs I see it running on the interface here it's in state waiting I'll give it just a moment to catch up all right, I see it came up a state backup. So I should be able to go to IP routes. And here it is, the user subnet from the remote location, 172.16.0.0. If I pop back over here, IP routes, I see the hub subnet right there coming across OSPF. If I pop back to my ping, I can see that now the traffic is successfully moving across. All right. Thanks, guys. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Um, also, don't forget to check out thebrotherswisp.com where we do a podcast network related. Thanks and uh, have a good one.